کلیک کنید Join me for a cigarette if you like. <laughs> well, we got out of that one pretty well. Yeah. Just my water or yours? That's yours. I'm going to fall asleep. Don't, <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't relax like that much. <laughs> okay, Lois, anytime you're ready. Okay, Elvira, could you give us your full name and spell it for us, please, along with your maiden name? Elvira. Elvira Mary was, my maiden name was King, and now I'm a Wishard. I was a Jordan, then a Wishard. And it's Elvira, A-L-V-I-R-A, Wishart, it's W-I-S-H-A-R-T. And your maiden name? My maiden name was King. Spell it, please. Oh, King, K-I-N-G. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and what was the date of your birth, Elvira? Uh, September the 20th, 1932. And where were you born? I believe in Oneida. Okay. And could you give us the name of your parents and your mother's maiden name? Uh, Bertha King and Mason King. And my mother's maiden name was Denny. Do you, did you know your grandparents? I knew my grandmother real well, but my grandfather, I don't, I barely remember him. And could you give us their names? Uh, Cassie Denny mm -hmm. and uh, Daniel Denny. Okay, and that was on your mother's side? My mother's side. I never knew my father's parents at all. Oh, and then they never told you their names or anything? Uh, there was Mary King and Thomas King. Thomas King? Mm -hmm. and do you know what Mary, did they ever tell you what Mary King's maiden name was? Um, I don't remember. She no. probably told us, but I think it was a Paulus. Oh, really? Oh, okay. so. All right. <clears throat> and uh, did your mother and father ever tell you anything about uh, their education, if they had to go away to school or anything? Uh, my mother went to the boarding school here in Oneida. I don't know what to call what they call it. Um, Sacred Heart, maybe. I don't know. It used to be a government school. It was a government time. school, yeah, yes. It was a bureau school at one yeah. time. Well, my grandmother worked there all years and years, and I guess all the kids went there. Oh, okay. All of my grandmother's children. What about your um, your father? Did he go to school at all? Um, <coughs> he always said he only went to the sixth grade, but he was seemed well educated. Oh yeah. Yeah, he was very. He could read and write and. Did he say where he went to school? No, he never <coughs> said. <coughs> never said. Oh, okay. He was a little bit older than my, quite a bit older than my mother, so uh -huh. we never talked about things okay. like that then. Did your father have any brothers and sisters? He had one full sister and one half brother and one half sister. Could you give us their names, please? Um, Abby Kulon was his full sister, and Angeline Swamp and Abram Swamp was his half-brother and half-sister. Oh, okay. And what about your mother? Did she have any sisters and brothers? Oh, yes. <laughs> she had, I don't know how many, she had um, Millard, Comey, Bill, and Theodore, all Denny. And uh, she had Halder and Marion and Self. So there's eight children in that family. Eight children? Okay. Yeah. And did they always live in Oneida? I believe so. I, well, no, my Aunt Holly never did. She was always up north when she got married, Lily. Okay. And my Aunt Mary, and she got <coughs> married, and she was in Kakana all her, the rest of her married life. Mm -hmm. Do you have any brothers and sisters? I had a brother and a sister. Uh, my sister died, Beatrice King. Mm -hmm. And she was Beatrice uh, Richards when she died. And then Harold King is my brother, and that's just the two of us left. Oh, okay. And when you were growing up, where did you go to school? I went to Fourth Howard Blind School in Green Bay. So I went there from kindergarten up through high school. I was born blind, and I took me about oh, six, seven years, and they finally got me where I could start seeing, and then I went there, 
Then they put me there. It was Dr. Brusky and Miss Poindexter. Mm -hmm. And they were all got me back and forth to Madison. And that's where I had all my operations. Well, you had a lot of surgery on your eyes? Yeah, many. And I don't know if you remember, but I always had a, a white scar over my left mm -hmm. eye for years. Mm -hmm. Until last year, Dr. Mardan sent me to Appleton, and he said he had a friend there that he wanted to look at my eye, and they gave me a transplant. <laughs> Oh, really? So, Wonderful. Yeah, so oh. now that's coming back real well. After yeah, You don't have that weight anymore. No, I it's just that's now gone. That. Yeah, yeah, that's gone. Yeah. And still taking medication for it, but yeah. Yeah, so other than that, it's, I started out with Braille and then I started out typing like when I was in the second grade. And mm -hmm. as I came up, well, it was a blind school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah. It was right at Fourth Howard School. Mm hmm. They don't have it anymore, I guess. But it's too bad because it was a real good school. Yeah. And I graduated from there quite young. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, we did. I guess the most we ever had was like 12 kids in the, in the school. At, yeah. At one time is the most. Otherwise, there were yeah. four, five, six. Did whatever. you go on to school after that then? Uh, yeah, they sent me to Madison because I was 14 when I graduated. You know. So they had to do something with me for a couple of years. And then after that, I went to UWGB through the tribe mm -hmm. for teaching. And then quit Did that. <laughs> you, you didn't graduate from that then? No, well, I was already out practice teaching. Oh, you know. okay. In fact, they made a movie of our school in Seymour that time, that educational program. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that, that's when I was practice teaching there. Oh, well, it was okay. my field placement. I always say practice teaching, but you get a field placement. Uh -huh. And that was my field placement. And then we, I quit that, and we went into the bar business. Oh, okay. So I guess that's about all I did. <laughs> Are you retired now? Oh, yeah, we retired at 55. Oh, okay. And do you have any children? Uh, yes, I've got, I had four, I had five children. <laughs> I would say four. <laughs> I had five, I've had four by my previous marriage. And then I married Donald Wishard, and we had one, but it only lived like three and a half hours. And oh. then we didn't have any more. And what's the name of your children? I have Carol Silva left, and... Terry Jordan. Oh, okay. And the other, I had two more that died. Terry, I mean, Kelly and Arliss. Okay. And died. they and they were Jordans, did you say? Uh, well, Arliss married a Webster. She had one child, and we brought him up, James Webster. Mm -hmm. And he's the one with the heart transplant. Mm -hmm. So. And where, when did he have the heart transplant? Um. Gee. He lived 12 years with the heart transplant. He had the same thing as the Delgado boys had. Oh, okay. See, he was, they were first cousins. From that family. Yeah. yeah, it was the same family. And he lived 12 years with it. He died, well, it'll be two years in June yeah. now that he died. Mm -hmm. So we had him extra 12 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, so, and then Carol has one son. And that's Anthony Silva. So. You have any grandchildren? Those are the two grandchildren. Well, the other grandchildren were Terry. Great grandchildren, I'm no, sorry. No, huh? No, no. Just the grandchildren. Just them two boys. Well, Terry's children are too young yet. He's got a boy and a girl, uh, and Wyatt what's their and Lynette. Names? Wyatt and Lynette Jordan. Oh, okay. Yeah, and they're like in their early teens, like 12. And boy, she's going to be 13. He must be going to be 15 or something. Yeah. Did your parents talk Oneida? My mother did. Yeah, they did. Yeah. My mother didn't talk good Oneida, but well, I could understand her because she's talked half English and half half <laughs> Oneida. Yeah. So we can always make out what she was talking about. <laughs> did they ever teach you how to talk Oneida? I wasn't home that much. I was brought up in a foster home. Oh, okay. In Green Bay. And I still, every day, talk to my foster sister. Oh, okay. Yeah, she calls me sometimes. Helen Johansky. Oh, okay. She calls me sometimes two, three times a day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's yeah. really nice. Yeah, yeah. We get along real well. Uh -huh. And my foster parents are both dead, and 
my foster brother died last year, so it's only her left. You know. Oh, okay. So. Well, it's good you got each other. Yeah. 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 And then she lives right behind Isabel's house. Do you remember oh, Isabel? Oh, there, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she yeah. lives right behind there. They're neighbors. Oh, okay. So that. Her ho Isabel's house out here or the one in town? In town. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're kind of back to back on different streets. You know? Oh, yeah. Helen's on Toronto and Isabel's on Leal. Oh, okay. So it's, my aunt knew them real well, so mm -hmm. it made it nice. Yeah, so. well that's good. Um, did your did your mother or your grandmother even, maybe your grandmother, did, did she ever talk about any uh, herbs and stuff that they used for medicines? Uh, no, she didn't know too much of that, but she made baskets. Your grandmother my made grandma baskets? My grandma was a great basket maker. Oh, okay. And my grandfather um, made all the axe handles and all the basket handles out of white birch or something, or white, no, white ash. White ash, yeah. White ash or something. Yeah. Yeah, she oh. was great with the baskets. But she didn't teach you? Um, well, like I said, I wasn't out here. Oh, that's right, you weren't out here. Yeah, I wasn't out here that much. I'd come out like two weeks in the summer maybe or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, when you were out of school? Then until I got out of school, then I... I'd come for a vacation, you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. Otherwise, they just really had me out of here. Yeah. So it was. I would come out to the relief office with Miss Poindexter on uh -huh. Tuesdays sometime. And but that was all. And where was the relief office? Right next to Morgan's store, the little building that was next to Morgan's oh, okay. store. Mm -hmm. And I would come out with her. She picked me up. I guess I was more like. She was more like my big sister at the time than, <laughs> than anybody I knew out here, was you know. Was it kind of like a health clinic for Oneida then? Uh, yeah, it was Oneida Health, you know, whatever they did. I suppose a clinic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they used to give them relief, grew up groceries there and stuff too, I guess. Oh, okay. During the war or depression or something. Yeah. I mean. But I guess that's why they call it the relief office. And was Miss Poindexter a nurse at that time? Yeah, she was the county nurse out here. Oh, okay. Yeah, and Dr. Brusky was working with her. They used, to, they used to have that clinic there on every Tuesday. All the Indians could go in there. In the relief and, office? Yeah, the they, they could go there and get medicine and doctored and whatever yeah. they needed. Okay. They didn't have a lot, but they had a doctor anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it, what, did, what did you say your husband's name was? Donald. Donald Wishart. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what was the date of your marriage to Donald? Well, let's see, that was <laughs> May the 6th, uh, 61. 1961? Yeah. Yes. yeah, 44 years, just think of that. Oh, that's a long time. <laughs> that's a long time. <laughs> I guess it was seven the first marriage and 44 the next. So. Oh, yeah. That's that's a little good. improvement. <laughs> yeah. Quite an improvement. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, what do you think about uh, the per capita that we get? Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm happy to get anything I can get, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have you uh, participated in any of the elderly programs that they have? Like what? Any, anything. Oh. What programs uh, do you know that the Oneidas have for the elderly now? Oh, they have the eating one over there, and they have something on H. Mm -hmm. and Is that recreation over on H? Yeah. I deliver bread from the pantry every Tuesday. <laughs> I got the down Is the to pantry the just for the elderly or is it no, for anybody? No, it's for everybody. For Any everybody. Of the, everybody for the needy. But we get an awful lot of uh, bakery. Oh, okay. So um, we figured they could use it other than throwing it out, you know. Yeah. So we deliver some down. Now they're starting to pick it up. They're feeling sorry for me, I guess. <laughs> oh, and what, day do, what days do you have that? On Tuesday, Tuesday on morning, Tuesday? They, they, they pick it up, take it down there, and then they distribute it, I guess, mm -hmm. to the elderly places, the feeding places, like the Methodist Church where they feed, and up here, oh, okay. and that. And then I work at the pantry on Wednesday morning. And I, I'm a volunteer with their, whatever they have to do, like they have the cookouts and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And we have bake sales, and keeps us busy. How many volunteers do they have working over there? Well, do you want the regulars or the fly-by-nights? <laughs> the regulars. <laughs> oh, there's about 
six or seven that you've got that you can really depend on. Oh, okay. And the rest, I guess they got about 17 that in and out, you know. They, oh, okay. They volunteer when they feel like it. But she's got a good, a good seven or eight of them that are really that are steady. Steady that she can call in if she needs them and stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you do you have to uh, be there almost every day or? No, I only go on Wednesday. Well, I now I go on Tuesday morning and Wednesday oh, okay. morning. But um, the pantry and the commodity things are in the same building, but they're separate, you know. So, mm -hmm. but there's somebody there every day. But somebody volunteers every day. Yeah, helps her out. Do you think that the tribe has enough <clears throat> enough programs for the elderly? For me, there is. I don't know. Probably other ones can use them. I mean, I read in the drums that they have bowling and stuff like that, you know. But. Uh -huh. Um, we're pretty active, Donald and I, on our own, you know. Yeah. Like, he still plays ball, and he's... Plays ball yet? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> and he golfs every day, and so I'm, I keep busy, you know, yeah. and I'm, then mm -hmm. he comes home, and we're gone again. We're very seldom home. Yeah. And then we got a little cottage up north that we, we go up every Friday afternoon in the summer and stay mm -hmm. till. Saturday or Sunday, come home. And oh, that's nice. Keeps us going. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I guess we don't want to get old. <laughs> <laughs> None of us do, really. I guess. Uh, did you? Uh, what holidays do you remember when you were young? Well, Fourth of July. <laughs> Fourth of July. What'd you do on Fourth of July? Oh, my aunt Marion and her family used to come out by my grandma's. That was the hub. Oh. You uh -huh. know, and then my mother took care of my grandmother. So we lived there, you know, when I'd come home, that's mm -hmm. who we lived. And then um, they'd all come there for the holidays. That's one holiday I was usually home, so I remember that. Oh. Okay. Christmas, I can remember Christmas. Yeah. Stuff like that, but. What do you remember about Christmas? Christmas tree. Christmas tree? <laughs> <laughs> Going to church down to the Episcopal. And then. Um, Lots of fruit, candy, yeah. <laughs> but never too much of anything else, just food, you know what I mean? I, those things yeah. I remember. And what church affiliation did you have? We always belonged to the Episcopal Church. The one here? Yeah. In I guess my mother belonged to the Catholic Church. They all belonged to the Catholic Church to start with. Oh. But um, she transferred down here for some reason. So your family was all brought up here then? Yeah, we all, we all down at the Episcopal. Okay. And then when I remarried, well, I married a Lutheran and my children were Lutheran because I lived close to the Lutheran church and that's where I had them baptized. So oh. I was the only one that wasn't Lutheran. So I thought I better change. So now you're Lutheran? So now I'm Lutheran. Oh, yeah. okay. And right we, in your back door, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we go to church right up the hill from yeah. us. And got all our family buried right next door. Yeah. Do you have any hobbies that you do, that you do? Uh, not anymore. <laughs> any crafts or anything? No, I just make puzzles and work at the pantry. <laughs> and you didn't learn how to make baskets? Oh no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that always looked like a hard job. <laughs> if you were going to uh, give the youth of today any kind of information or say anything to them, what would you tell them? To who? to the youth of today? <clears throat> I guess just behave and go to school and get your education. We have all the facilities here and such good programs now that they help out. Uh -huh. I mean, just get your education. You can't do anything <clears throat> without it anymore. And I guess I could just tell what my mother told me and my foster mother told mm -hmm. me is don't lie and don't steal. Yeah. And you'll make it in life. Yeah. So as long as you don't lie, because once you lie, you've got to tell another one. So. Yeah. So that's about all you can tell them, kids. Yeah. I feel sorry for them today. The world is so upside down, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. For them, I guess you can't hardly blame them. I mean, they, they all try hard, I guess. It's yeah. just they don't have very you know, a very good life in this yeah. in the country right now, the way yeah. we are. Do you remember ever getting that 52-cent check? 
I knew about it. I don't think I ever got it. Oh, okay. But I, I know my mother got it, you know. Yeah. She always talked about it and yeah. stuff like that. But, oh, she'd have been so happy now with <laughs> getting money. <laughs> what about the New York land claim? Oh. What do you think about that? Did you hear about it? When oh, yeah. you were growing up, oh, did you hear about Yeah, that? my mother always talked about that, you know, they always, they were always waiting for it all their life, you know, and so I said she'd be and so we're happy. still waiting. Now. We're still waiting, but, oh, we get enough right now, I mean. Yeah. We get our doctor and our medical, and I, I think we, we are, I'm well pleased with everything I get, mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah. And all the help we get, and um, the elderly helps you in every way they can, yeah. and stuff like that. You think the gaming has been a big benefit to the tribe? Well, it has so far, but I don't know how long it's going to last. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, that something can stop tomorrow, I guess. It just depends upon the government. Yeah. yeah. It's, <coughs> it, it was here once, and it was gone again with this country, so it can go again, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that was here years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, it's... Any questions back there? Well, is, no. there any, is there anything that I might have missed that you wanted to tell us today? Well, I don't think so. No? Okay, well, no. I want to thank you for coming down for this interview, and we really appreciate it. Okay. In about four weeks, I'll deliver a tape to you. Okay, that And then be the great. tribe will keep one tape. Okay. Okay. That'll and then be fine. Alan will unhook you. Okay. Don't move till he unhooks you. <laughs>